Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's the post-mortem on Indiana Jones opening weekend. And supposedly this movie is going to lose more money than The Flash. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Now, the movie did about what they thought, which was... 60-ish million dollars, which is not good for an Indiana Jones movie. Uh, current year, they were expecting a lot more than that. I'm sure they were hoping for 100 plus million. Well, the budget ballooned on oh, this it's one. Like 300 and some million dollars. Yeah. So we're going to talk about this because it's interesting. Uh, all of these news outlets are writing stories about how bad it did. There is no way to put a good spin on this. But uh, IndieWire actually said that there will absolutely be heads rolling at Lucasfilm at Disney because of the failure of this movie and Disney's other movies. Well, I'll tell you what. So, so there is a rumor going around that Kathleen Kennedy is gone it, again because you know she's supposed to have been gone like seven years by this point. Yeah. But um, at this point in time, if I would hear that now, I believe it. Like I, w I didn't believe it then. But if I, if someone would say, hey, we, we think she's gone, I would actually believe it this time because this is bad. So, I mean, look at look at the pattern Disney getting rid of people in the last couple of months. Uh, Ant-Man 3 does poorly, Victoria Alonso gets gone. The Little Mermaid does poorly, they get rid of their chief diversity officer. And now we've got- Oh, they got rid of Pixar people too. They got rid of Pixar people, yeah. Light your bombs they're out of here and this might have been kathleen kennedy's last chance i, I don't mean, know i don't know i mean if she survives this one then you know damn well that she's got some kind of blackmail material on somebody some kind of holy relic that something because i mean she already ruined star wars we they so willow was so bad they pulled it off of disney plus and took a write down yeah it's not even going to be aired anymore and now indiana jones so let's talk about this before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys if you do you'll get a woohoo woo uh i don't think there are gonna be many uh woohoos at disney come probably what wednesday because i think they'll probably take off for the fourth of july so maybe wednesday they'll do monday's meeting on wednesday maybe and uh that's when that's when things are gonna be bad they're gonna be really bad because they're gonna get their their uh, five day results now trying to say well for five days this movie might break a hundred million oh, that's for not good five days uh, remember uh, not too long ago kingdom of the crystal skull did more than twice this back in 2008 and it was a terrible movie and this one uh, actually is not not much better from what i've heard i haven't seen it so i can't say so indiana jones may lose more money than the flash as summer now lags behind 2022, another franchise entry that costs too much and passed its expiration date fails to adequately draw. Now, this is Disney in general. It costs too much, past expiration date. That's Disney's choices lately. Uh, and it's it's the way the movies are being produced. Because remember, you can make respectful follow-ups. You can make respectful sequels that are crowd pleasers and do well at the box office. See Ghostbusters Afterlife. See Top Gun Maverick. Well, people were saying about this one, they're like, there's ways they could have done this. If they were insistent they had to do another one, they could have done it in a way that wasn't like they did it. <laughs> there's ways they could have done it that was respectful and made more sense. Yeah, they said uh, Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny with reported production budget close to three hundred million. I heard three hundred twenty nine million. Yeah, and I think they have like then people said that's not counting the like hundred million. You know, pr promotion and all yeah. that. Uh, open to 130 million worldwide. That includes the studio's generous estimate of 60 million for the U.S. Canada box office. Now, 60 million is less than Black Adam for an Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, but I, people, no, people didn't want it, and they knew what to expect. Yeah. Uh, this weekend marks the midway point of the summer movie season, which began with expectations that it might achieve a 20 percent uptick. Against 2022. Well, yeah, because we had Mario and we had mm -hmm. Spider-Man mm -hmm. and they were both doing very, very well. So you well, can get an uptick as long as it's not Disney. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, as of now, the season's total gross sits slightly below last year. Add in marketing, including its uh, Cannes Film Festival premiere and the total investment for Indiana Jones might be $450 million with no path to profit. Yeah, that's not good. It might lose as much as The Flash, which costs closer to $200 million and we'll see a worldwide gross of only two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, but not counting like the the you know marketing and all that. No, unless there's a massive turnaround for Indiana Jones, unlikely given its initial trajectory, and with uh, Mission Impossible opening July twelfth, 
it will get to between 300 million to 350 million worldwide. That's worldwide. With somewhat more than half returned to Disney and film rental, that's under 200 million versus its huge cost. Yeah, that's not good. This is actually the worst case scenario. I like the for fact this movie. that they're putting out there too about how much Disney actually gets to keep because you're forgetting all people when they put these things out there like it made money. Little Mermaid people especially are like horrible about it. It made money. It, it's at whatever five hundred and forty million now, and it's like yeah, but you have to remember too. The theaters didn't get their cut. And then they have residuals that come out for actors and things like that from that too. And they just can't wrap their head around the fact that if it made 540, that they got all that money. They didn't. Yeah. You know, IndieWire made that clear, which I thought was nice. Yeah, they're actually breaking it down very nicely. Good for job, the, IndieWire. For the stupid people in the back, they're breaking it down. Uh, so Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull wasn't a favorite among critics or fans. But even so, it still grossed. 786 million worldwide. It would be over a billion dollars uh, currently, adjusted for inflation. Mm. They said Harrison Ford is, is uh, he's now 80 years old, but he still has star power. He's in Apple TV shrinking. He's in 1923. He's going to be doing MCU stuff. Doing MCU stuff. Yeah. So it's weird. They said the durability of Indiana Jones is unusual, but it's not unique. Witness another Steven Spielberg property with the Jurassic Park films. However, there are a few key differences. Yeah, Jurassic World made money. Jurassic Park produced six films in 30 years, while Indiana Jones saw five films in 40 years. Uh, Jurassic Park also adjusted its casting. Okay. Um, then they're going to argue, well, we've got Fleabag. But here's the difference, though. Jurassic Park was one that, as long as the park was, you know, the, the dinosaurs were the main characters. Yes. You could adjust yes. your casting. When you have something like Indiana Jones, you can't. They said, yeah, of course, Ford is Indiana Jones. Right. And his age proved to be a publicity centerpiece. That's not the problem. It's funny, though, because Harrison Ford, you see him in interviews, like, he talks about how they were trying to use, like, you know, stunt people, you know, to, to look better on him and a horse and stuff. And he's like, I'm an old dude on a horse. Let me get off the horse and let me fall. Because he's like, I, you know, this is what I would look like as an old dude getting off a horse, you know. <sighs> that was kind of cool. He, he was like, you know, I'm old. So, hey. Uh, they said failed to follow in the footsteps of Top Gun Maverick. They said the scores, the audience scores weren't that great. They said Maverick was A plus, Flash was B. This There's was a B+. difference. Maverick actually tried to respect what came before and tried to keep it, you know, in line with, you know, the Top Gun mm. that was there. You, you knew. Indiana Jones, you know, somewhat, I guess there were some things they did try to keep it in line, but then they did things like, you know, for whatever reason, he and Mary, well, because I guess because their kid's kid died, and he and Mary are split up and all this other crap, and then they threw Fleabag in there, and then he was acting out of character for himself, which a lot of people were put off by that. It's yeah. like you didn't, you, you there were so many ways you could have done it and done it well. See Ghostbusters 2016 versus Ghostbusters Afterlife, you guys did a Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah, pretty much. Maverick so, did an afterlife. <laughs> so anyway, they're they're looking at the five titles. Disney's five titles here. We've got Elemental, Little Mermaid, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume Three. It actually, it actually is going to do money. A little, yeah, yeah, a little bit. But Mermaid's they, going to be breaking even if that. And they got this one. So we're talking one point five billion in production and marketing costs, and only Guardians performed somewhat good. Oh yeah, Elemental did terrible. Elemental did terrible. Little Mermaid massively underperformed. And it's not, you know, the the uh, global box office, and we'll get to that, that's not going to help this thing either. People are like, well, it might not do well in the States, but it might be like pirates and do well overseas. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. Didn't do as bad, though, as uh, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Oh, yeah, we knew that wasn't going to do well. Five million dollars. They were saying they were saying eight, but five million dollars, that's all it did. That was another one of those ones that you thought should go to a streaming service. Yeah, that actually looked like a movie. It was. It doesn't look like a bad movie. It's just getting lost in everything else that's out. Now, what's going to bring the money? And they mentioned it's out here, and I agree. Is Mission Impossible, Oppenheimer, and Barbie? And they're Barbie. No, no, seriously, they're like going. They're thinking Barbie's going to do really well. See, I never would have guessed. That. I wouldn't either. Uh, but... And I still don't. I mean, I'll still believe it when I see it, kind of thing. But they said that you know the marketing. Well, we had the stuff in France that was going on. Like I guess it said the way they worded the poster. It could, you know, mean Ken F's and he F's or something like that. Yeah. But he fucks. Okay, sorry. Yes, yes. Ken, she Ken. can do anything and he can, and Ken fucks. Yeah. <laughs> With what? I don't know because he's a little smooth down there. But yeah, but you know, it's how you use it. Doesn't how matter how big it is. <laughs> he grinds real good. That's a lie. It does matter. Anyway. <laughs> 
So he said, it's hard to imagine the summer's results not having repercussions at Disney and other studios. Warner Brothers must contend with the Flash. Universal saw a real disappointment with Fast yeah. X. And uh, yeah, and this is before the strike. And this might be the last batch of movies. I think people are tired of going to the theater. They don't want to go. Like, they got tired. Not They got used to not going and now they're not going. But I think they're also presented with things that are like, don't care. So this is... <laughs> This is crazy. It said, falling short of its projected 140 million global debut, Doll of Destiny could manage to whip up only 130 million. That's worldwide. not that far off, though. It's not, but it's not enough. But I'm just saying, it's 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 pretty close to what they're expecting. Uh, they're saying the budget's between 250 and 330. I, I've heard over. I, I heard that, and then the like 100 million in, in product in promotion costs on top of it. They said it's one of the most expensive movies of all time. What this means is Doll of Destiny must pull off some kind of miracle if it wants to turn a profit. The rule of thumb is that a movie this size needs to gross twice its production budget to break even. So break even for this movie is $600 million worldwide. I would say it's higher than that because if you figure it's 330 plus another $100 million in promotion, it would have to do like 800 I think, to break even. We'll say it's even $700 million. Yeah. I mean, it's they said Fast X eventually got to $700 million, but uh, they said it's it's going to be... It's going to be bad. So all the indie movies have been blockbusters. And yeah, they keep trying to say, well, this one's doing better than the first one, which came out in the early 1980s. To, to and, half the theaters. And half the theaters. And, and inflation. And inflation. We didn't take, you know, we didn't take that into account. But yeah, it's just, it's a disaster, guys. There's no good way to spin this. You know, Disney said there were higher hopes for the debut of this movie. No shit. No shit. They honestly thought this thing was going to do 100 plus million opening weekend. What's the problem with this movie? This promotion which says it all. What's the first? Who's the first person you notice? Oh, look, it's her. And then there's like an old Indy in the background. I mean, this this picture sums up your whole fucking problem. This it's is... Indiana Jones, not Fleabag in the Dial of Destiny. Fleabag in the Dial of Destiny. Helena Shaw in the Dial of Destiny. So it's, it's Helena over. Helena shouldn't. Helena <laughs> shouldn't. It, th this is over. Indiana Jones is over. She's not going to get a Disney Plus spinoff. There's not going to be any more Indiana Jones. I don't ever. I don't usually believe the whole Kathleen Kennedy's gone rumor stuff, but this time I would. I don't know what's going to happen, but if you would, if they would announce tomorrow she's gone, I would not be surprised. This one, this actually might do it. And if it, and if it doesn't, if she doesn't get canned after this, then I'm telling you she has blackmail material on somebody because yeah. this, the, she should have been fired when she ruined Star Wars. Even if they even if they get rid of her, there I, I could see them doing it in such a way that's like she's just going to be a consultant, guys. Yeah, like the, she her own company is going to. She's going to do. Yeah, she's going to produce her own film. She's going to be a consultant. Uh, there's not much for Kathy to do because you know writer strike, and so you know she's just she decided to leave on a high note. But the sad thing about all this is, <laughs> yeah, even if they get rid of her, the sad thing about all this is, they had a chance to do Star Wars and they had one shot. And they ruined it. And now they can't go back because we lost Carrie Fisher. Yes. You had one shot to make good on the original trilogy onto somebody else. And you, you messed that up. And then you got to Willow. And you had one shot to make a good Willow story. And you done fucked that up. And then you come to Indiana Jones. And again, you had a shot. Because you have one shot. He's only going to do one more film. And you had one chance. I mean, honestly, you shouldn't have done any of it. But if you're going to do it, there were so many things, from my understanding, that could have been changed that would have made it believable and would have made it feel like Indiana Jones and would have made it Indiana Jones. And you didn't do it. And all three choices, all three movies, what went wrong was your in insistence of pushing these women as the main characters. That was your problem. And it wasn't even Ray for Star Wars as much as it was like Rose Tico and Holdo and all that shit. And then, you know, Indiana Jones, you have, you know, Helena Shaw, it's all about her, obviously. Even that one picture we showed you, yeah. you can clearly get the gist of it from that photo. And then Willow, it's like, it seems like all it was, you know, I, I saw a lot of it and it was boring as fuck. And it was just like, you know, yeah, Laura Dan and, and then the, the lesbian princess and her lesbian girlfriend night. Now, there are other characters, too, but that's basically what it was all about. I'm sorry. You did this to your damn selves. Well, and it, it makes me mad because it didn't have to happen, and I'm pissed. Fuck it. I, I, even, I even catch this. A few things to stomach. This has come from uh, Deadline. Not only did Star Wars bomb Solo open higher than Dial of Destiny, it bombed harder than Solo because Solo did $84 million for three days. But Paramount's uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast, which is the seventh Transformers movie, still opened higher than Indiana Jones at 61 million. That was a movie with like no buzz. Yeah. 
I mean, that's fucking pathetic. That is. I think it's a combination of things, but I think it's mostly people like don't want to see, you know, Indiana Jones. uh, They think that this is kind of unnecessary. And, you know, going into what you're going to get, it's not going to be an Indiana Jones film. You're not going to get you. If you you watch, you know, Willow, if you watch Star Wars, you already know what you're getting. Yeah, I mean this. This one might be. This might be the kill shot for Captain. Why Gary. are all the diversity inclusion people getting shit canned? I have no fucking idea. Because they're looking at this. They're like, we are running out of money. We've been listening to you idiots for the last and they're replacing six or seven them years. with people that just deal with like HR stuff yeah. and not making choices for films and stuff. Yeah, go see our video. Uh, go see our video talking about Netflix and Warner and the positions are being merged, basically merged into HR. They're not going to have like a chief diversity czar. They're like, yeah, we'll we'll deal with equity and inclusion when it uh, you know when it deals with employees and that sort of thing. But we're not going to have people overseeing every production, which is good because they're realizing this is this is a surefire way to kill your kill your product. Yeah, this is this is insane. I never could have guessed that this was going to be that much of a disaster. Oh, I um, I honestly thought it was. Well, going I, to be. I didn't think it would o- open lower than freaking solo. I mean, that's, I, I, I'm not surprised, honestly. But the thing is, I got to tell you, it breaks my heart. Like, it makes me sad. And, and Neon can vouch. It just makes me really sad. I, I can't. I, it just makes me sad. I wish you'd just stop ruining things. You, look, Crystal Skull was not a great movie, but Indy got his, his happy ending. He went off into the sunset. He got married. You know, they kind of set it up. Maybe sort of someday we could have a sequel. We didn't have to go there. It was fine. The ending was okay. There's just so just, many times you can see things you love get destroyed and yeah. things that you grew up with get destroyed. And it's just like, you just, you just, you just can't anymore. You know, you're just like, I'm done. I'm just tired. I don't even get excited about stuff anymore. I, I, I really don't. Very few things get me excited. I, I'm like, you proved to me that this is not going to be a train wreck. I mean, even, you know, I, I keep going back to uh, Picard season three. And it took me five or six weeks to come around. Everybody's like, you have to watch it. You have to watch it. You have to watch it. I'm like, no, I've heard this before. No, I watched two, two or three episodes of Picard. It sucked. I'm not going back for more. And uh, I watched it and I loved it. But I'm like, you have to prove to me. That, that you actually have people in charge that, that care about these franchises. And now I just assume the worst. I'm like, oh, they're rebooting whatever. It's going to it's gonna suck ass because, of course, it is. Because the people they hire, they never care about the property. It's all about uh, you know re- reformatting this, this the pop culture landscape in their own image. Well, that's um, what they said. How could Disney and Lucasfilm mess this up? You answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe. You okay? No. You're crying. It makes me sad. I'm sorry. It really does. It's like when you get, you know, like older and stuff and things you love to get destroyed, and then you know you don't have those people very long. Like, you know, how long are we going to have Harrison Ford? You, you lose, like, we lost Carrie Fisher. And it's like yeah, you keep losing people that, you know, were a big part of your life when you're kids, and then they keep ruining things. And then if you don't like it, they didn't do as much of this one, but with other things like Star Wars or she or whatever. If you don't like it, they, just, they yell at you and tell you you're a bad person, but they're the ones that are ruining it. And it's just, it's just sad. And you know, you're not gonna get another one and you had one chance and you ruined it. You know, it's just, and you don't know how long we're gonna have people. It's just a constant, we keep losing people from when we were kids no. and all the time. And it's just, it's sad. Sorry. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef.support.